Good morning. Thanks for having me here. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk a lot about internet security, which is a lot about talking about economic well-being in this day and age. It's talking about national security. I'm going to talk about the threats to those things, namely hacking and hackers and all of those sorts of things. But I'm also going to wrap up by giving you a glimpse into a concept that I call hack yourself first. <laughs> really. <laughs> uh, because I, it's a strategy, it's a concept that we really must at a national, bear up, at a global scale, use to protect ourselves. So when I say things like economic well-being and national security, it's only because there's bad guys out there with you know, computer skills that are uh, very good. And right now, there's a war going on, you know, a war for data, a war for military secrets. Right now, the bad guys are stealing data by the terabyte a day, okay? Terabytes and terabytes of it. It's going to be your personal information because they make a lot of money on it. It's going to be intellectual property from organizations, large and small, and it's going to be military secrets from our government because this is what their job actually is. 24 by 7, 365 days a week. And they're making billions and billions at it. And I know these things because I am a hacker. <laughs> Not that kind. <laughs> um, to, if you're the Star Wars fan, I'm more like the Jedi kind as opposed to the Sith. You know, and <laughs> There's the good guys and there's bad guys, you know, light side and the dark side. And I get asked a lot, you know, uh, how I got into this uh, world of hacking here, and I have to explain the story, and the story goes that my first job out of uh, high school was to be a Unix administrator uh, for a large biotech firm. This was a really cool job for somebody who's 19, 20 years old, right? And uh, so I you know, moved from Maui, and I went to Southern California, and I started my career. And once, and the reason they gave me that job because of the background in you know, computer software, Unix administration, but also to web-enable all their, you know, systems and bring them into the modern world. One summer, uh, I saw a whole bunch of press releases out there that said, you know, somebody, some hacker had found vulnerabilities in the sites like Yahoo and eBay and uh, Amazon and different sites like that, and that they were, quote unquote, insecure. And this was, actually, you know what, the most shocking part to me is I thought everybody already knew. <laughs> I mean, I've been building and designing systems just like that for a while, and I, you know, I thought this was just par for the course here, and you know, we let them stay up. Um, so I, that went away, and a couple of weeks later, um, the same companies issued press releases and said that they had fixed the vulnerabilities and that they were now secure. I, I, how did they do this, right? <laughs> so I, I went home and you know, signed up myself a new Yahoo Mail account and wanted to figure this out. Now, some people go home and they have hobbies, they, have art, you know, they do art and watch TV, and video games and all sorts of things, right? I go home and I hack, I break stuff. So, you know, equivalent of my crossword puzzle. So I signed up myself a new Yahoo Mail account and I said, okay, how hard can this be to break into my own account? It took me like five minutes. You know, I didn't have permission to do this, mind you, but I figured, you know, no, no harm, it's just my account. And I wrote up myself a, an advisory of sorts, an email, and I sent it anonymously to Yahoo and say, hey, I found this issue, you might want to fix this stuff because I could read 100 million people's emails. And <laughs> I get back to work and I had a response back from Yahoo. Uh, I later found out there was one of the, you know, one of the two founders. And they said, uh, you know, thank you very much for letting us know of the issue. We appreciate you wanting to be anonymous, but you know, let us know if we can send you a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty excited by this. I hacked Yahoo, I'm gonna get a t-shirt, this is awesome. <laughs> so, uh, and we start this dialogue, right, and I'm fighting more and more issues, and I'm sending them over to them, and it eventually led to a job at Yahoo. My actual business card on my job title said, the hacker Yahoo, and that was my first foray. You know, my job there was to literally hack everything that they had, preferably before the bad guys did. So that was the first time I was exposed to this concept called hack yourself first, because, you know, everybody was, you know, going after them. And, you know, so that was kind of ancient history, but now most of the time, I... I spend a lot of my time teaching people how to hack. I teach people how to hack all sorts of things. I teach them how to hack retail websites, hack into banks. I teach them social networks, your online accounts. I teach thousands of people all over the world like this. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to teach you guys how to hack. <laughs> what did you like to hear? All right, so let's say, you, let's say we pick a, an online auction site. 
you ever go to a website and you ask to put in your username to log in and you put in your password and sometimes you get it wrong a few times and it might lock your account? Well, that's a security system designed to prevent other people from guessing your password and breaking in. So that's a security system. On this, on this online auction site, let's say you went to the other end of the site and you wanted to bid on an item and you're asked to put in your password. Can you verify that it is you and that you wanted to do this? Another security system, but check this out. When you put this together, you got an insecure scenario. So I'm the bad guy here. I find an item that I want, I bid on it, you bid against me, I don't like that. So I take your username, I go over to the login field, I put in your username, and I purposely fail your account a few times until it locks, and then I outbid you. <laughs> I, see how, these things are not sophisticated, you know? <laughs> I do not recommend going home and doing this kind of thing. <laughs> But so, you know, so back to White Hat. So White Hat, we have a, you know, an army of the very best hackers in the world that do this for companies, large and small, hundreds of them, where we literally hack into their, uh, hack into their systems day in and day out every single day to find these issues and get them fixed before the bad guys give them a really bad day. And, you know, if I had, you know, 60 minutes versus, uh, you know, 18 minutes, I could teach you how to determine what websites somebody visits, what sites that they're logged into, uh, how to turn on their webcam and microphone and monitor them without their knowledge. All these sorts of things I can show you how to do, and it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty easy to do. So we do all this, you know, this hacking at Y Hat. And uh, one of the other things that I want to talk about is you know, the victims of hacking, the, the outcomes. If you're, a, if you're an individual, hacking can be bad, but it's not that bad. You're, most of the times you experience hacking, and this is why when I teach people hack, most people get the idea that this is you know, not such a good idea, but this is to expose what's going on out there, because I also believe teaching people to hack is actually a good thing, a really, really good thing. It's a necessary thing, and I'll get to that. When, when we're at White Hat, we, we want to find these issues and, uh, and get them fixed. So if you're a victim, you know, you get, your, your computer might get uh, hit with viruses and worms and pop-ups and spam and all those things. It's bad, but it's not that bad. You might lose some money, suffer some embarrassment. If you're a, a person of note, a politician or celebrity, it's even worse because we not only want your, your acts, we not only want your data, but we want access to the systems that you have and the people that are around you that lead us to that point. If you're a business, you're going to lose intellectual property, you're going to lose the money in your bank accounts, but you're going to lose the ability to compete because there's people all over the world that can hack into your equipment, steal your formulas, your software, all sorts of things. Uh, that you might hold valuable. If you're a government, it gets even worse because there's people out there in other countries and other governments with cyber armies that want military secrets. They want our engine designs, they want our missile technology, they want access to our critical systems, they want anything and everything that they can get their hands on. And this is where it gets really, really serious. And I actually brought a quote with me from a gentleman by the name of uh, Ian Bremer, who is the uh, president of the Eurasia Group, because I think he really nails it where I never could. He says, when you have hundreds of Western multinational corporations that have seen industrial espionage that's been directly targeted at them through cyber attacks, massive unprecedented cyber attacks that were either directly organized by the Chinese government or were known about and actively tolerated by the Chinese government on behalf of Chinese corporations, that is a pretty good description of a war. Now, I want to be careful here because I don't want to single out China, but they are one on the list, but so is the US, so is the Ukraine, Romania, India, France, and so on. I bet you everybody has a cyber army and they're conducting this sort of work. But here's the point, because this is where it gets really interesting. I mean, a Chinese sort of interesting way. Um, national security is no longer about tanks. National security is increasingly about economic well-being, internet security, and issues that allow us to live on a daily basis. We are not worried about the Soviets blowing us up with nukes, but we are worried about that our kids will be able to enjoy a quality of life vaguely related to our own. Internet security is about, in, about economic well-being and national security. So this is what I do on a daily basis. So which, which brings me to this whole concept called hack yourself first, because we're not so much concerned, at least I'm not concerned about you know, the internet going down, I'm more worried about when it stays up. You know, how can companies and individuals per, possibly defend themselves against militaries who are professionally trained and, they have, and they're well-funded. This is what we're dealing with out there. So this brings me to hack yourself first. There are companies out there who have actually figured out that by 
making hacking illegal, because hacking is illegal against federal law, but only if you don't have consent of the owner of the system to test it. But some companies out there who transact billions of dollars, who you have accounts on, have said, you know what, we're going to invite hackers in and let them test our sites with impunity. We only ask them to discreetly share with them their findings with us so we can get them fixed, and we'll put their name on their website for their... Uh, uh, for their reputation, uh, reputational purposes. These companies might surprise you. It's going to be PayPal, Salesforce.com, uh, Microsoft, and the likes. They openly invite people, anybody in the world, to hack them and just give them the data. They're not going to call the cops or prosecute them or anything else like that. A few other companies have taken one step forward. They actually offer up bounty programs. They actually pay people for these vulnerabilities. These are companies like Google, uh, Facebook and Mozilla. If you're not familiar with Mozilla, they make the Firefox web browser. They've paid millions and millions of dollars to hackers, we call them security researchers, who give them vulnerabilities and make these systems more secure. All the naysayers that said this idea wouldn't work, none of their predictions, their dire warnings happened. These systems stayed up, they got more secure, they got access to new security talent that they would never have found. Remind you of anyone? <laughs> so, this is what Hack Yourself First is uh, really, really all about. There, I don't want to trivialize the, the subject, but there's a phrase that I really, uh, really liked out there that it really resonated with me, that if you're playing a game and that you can't afford to lose, then you must change the rules. And that is what Hack Yourself First is all about. We get nowhere by making hacking illegal. Because the bad guys, they don't care about our laws. That's never going to work. They're in the Ukraine. They're going to make billions of dollars. This is their nine to five. They don't care about these things. Imagine for law enforcement, we're going to have to try to investigate a cyber crime, you know, get all the evidence together. We're going to have to extradite a soldier in somebody else's cyber army, you know, get them here, prosecute them, and you know, try to put them in jail. That's never going to work on this scale. So that's why the bug bounty programs and Hack Yourself work, uh, First is so important, why we have to change the rules and turn the model around. So when I'm asked, like, you know, is teaching people to hack a good thing? This is why I teach people to hack, because it is necessary. It is essential. So I'll go on about and teaching as many people about this as I possibly can. And I, I think the way I want to wrap it up is this. Now, the, the day might come, because this is a war that we're not exactly losing. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Anybody on the public Wi-Fi? <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> I also want to, uh, to wrap up. I also want, just want to say one last thing. We're not exactly winning this war. The bad guys are making a lot more money, but the day might come yet where the bad guys are stealing more money from us than we can afford, where companies can't do business online because they're losing too much of their intellectual property. The day might still come where the those of you who have the courage to dream are afraid to do so online. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as White Hat Security is concerned, that is not going to happen on our watch. Thank you.